Hey y'all, William did a Pungo Prairie. Spring is here and there's a whole lot of work around here that needs to be getting done. And I kind of anticipated about a month ago, we might be going on lockdown where we have to stay at home and, and not be traveling about so much. So I started stockpiling things I needed to uh, carry on and get some of my projects underway. Like I didn't want to not be able to put my garden in. So I bought a bunch of these bedding plants and on the cold nights, I just moving them inside because I didn't want to leave them out in case we got another frost. But I think now that we're into the second week of April, I'm gonna go ahead and start planting some of these. But I'll show you some of the other stuff that, that I've gotten in so far. I got some seeds already planted, like my beets. They're starting to come up here a little bit. Uh, right over here, I got some carrots. They're just starting to sprout. I planted them about 15 days ago. I started them out with these boards on top of them. Of course, these onions, they've been in since way early on. Right here, I got some spinach just starting to come up. And some lettuce. And some fresh herbs we're getting ready to put in these containers here. And I started the barn last year, and I got it dried in right before I broke, went to camp this past fall. but. But like I said, about a few weeks back, I went and got all the shingles for the main roof. And I had ordered the metal last fall to go on the, the shed roof. And I put one more little raised bed over here under this kind of little arboretum thing. I don't know exactly what you call it. And I also stocked up on all the supplies that I'm going to need to finish out this bedroom remodel here in the Pungo Prairie Saloon. Because I didn't want to have to stop that project as well got that new window right there that'll replace that old window so i think i'm in pretty good shape here to be pretty well stocked up on plenty of the stuff i'm going to need to stay busy while we're staying at home because that's what we want to be doing right now is staying at home and getting this coronavirus thing under control you know nobody expected this this kind of came out of left field from nowhere and uh, it's gonna be tough. It's tough for a lot of people. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of doctors and nurses and EMS, first responders, people on the front line working around the clock. And, and we don't wanna make it any worse for them. So just kinda staying shut in. Of course, you know, shut in for being here on the Pungo Prairie, it's a whole lot different, I think, than, than it is for a lot of y'all. And, and I get that, I understand that. Like I said, I'm a quarter of a mile down the end of a little dirt lane off a of seldom travel country road out here <laughs> practicing <laughs> pretty much uh, as good as it gets for social distancing unless you live in Montana or Wyoming somewhere. So I'm, I'm really blessed, I know that, to, to be shut in like this. I'm, I, and I thank the Lord for it every day. And, and I know a lot of y'all don't have that option. And, uh, you know, that's why... I'm videoing most all these projects I got going on here, the barn building, the the saloon bedroom renovation, you know, all of it, the garden. Um, try to keep you a little bit entertained if I can when maybe you can't just get out and do some of these things for yourself. Now I know most of y'all, at least a lot of y'all like my camping videos from like last fall when Tally Girl and I was up in the mountains and we still got a couple more of them. This is one right here. This is when Tally Girl and I go back to camp after Christmas to celebrate New Year's. So if you wanna do a little throwback in camp to last fall with Tally Girl and me, don't go nowhere cause you don't wanna miss this. Well, it's been a little over three weeks since I left camp here in early December. It's now December 27th, two days after Christmas, and we're back. But where's my stove pipe? I hope that's falling down inside there somewhere. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. I know there's been a lot of wind up here since I've been gone. But other than that, it don't appear that any bears have broken in. Huh. Well, let's just 
go in here and check things out. Okay. Well, everything looks pretty good in here. Let's try this. Open up this other door and hope that stove pipe's in there. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> At least it's here. I can put it back together and clean that creosote up. <laughs> Man. There must have been some wind that took it out down here inside the tent. <laughs> Other than that, everything's looking pretty good. Yes, it is. I'll go get Tally Girl out of the truck. Hey, let me out of here. I gotta pee like a racehorse. <laughs> the mountains feel so good, Daddy. I'm gonna rub some mountain grass on me. It sure doesn't feel like the 27th of December up here. 61 degrees at a little before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The first thing I'm going to do is get that stove pipe fixed up because when that sun goes down, it gets chilly quick. There you go. I can't believe how warm it is, baby. You smelling out bowls, you sniffing out bowls already? <laughs> Are they burned under the tent floor like they did before, honey? Huh. Man, this floor is a mess. A mess. Okay. I'm gonna do the whole right on into the stove. There you go. Well, it could have been a whole lot worse than this. Like that year, 20 inches of snow came to send in. To get a new frame. Just a little bit of mess. Nothing to clean up right here. Compared to what a bear might have done. <laughs> Besides that, the chimney kind of cleaned itself with all the creosote. <laughs> all right, last little bit. Right out here in the fire pit. I guess we might as well go ahead and clean all the ashes out of this wood stove. Just like the big city airports, only without the big city. Kitchen and a suitcase. <laughs> the chuck box. Right. 
We're in business. Anytime you leave camp and you don't know exactly when you're coming back, you always get you a nice cache of dry firewood in because you never know, you might arrive in a snowstorm or a rainstorm. It's just a mystery to me how that stovepipe survived that stormy night, Halloween. We had tornadoes coming through, winds coming off the mountain at 60 miles an hour plus, and yet something came through here and blew it all down like that while we was gone. That would have scared Cali girl, you know what? <laughs> Me too. Yes, sir. When that sun goes down, that temperature drops quick. Oh, it's so good to be back in camp. Tonight, for dinner, we got some leftover bolognese and Christmas Eve heating up on the wood stove with the pork and the chicken. But they had all the Italian sausage. In goes the pasta. We're conserving water tonight. It's not as much water in that pot as I normally would like for boiling pasta. Uh-oh, I'm losing my light. My lantern's burning out. We just have to light our little candle lantern here. There we go. Now that's some ambiance. It's just so good to be back in camp. This locust tree here makes a really good wood for banking a fire so it holds through the night.
Oh my goodness. That, my friends, is New Year's Eve. What a little brown dog. Tally girl, you think I fixed that plate for you? Well, of course I do, Daddy. <laughs> Tally, <laughs> don't look away from the camera that people want to see you. Daddy, can you fix me a plate like that? Tally dog, you good girl. Of course I'm a good girl. Now fix me one of them prime ribs. <laughs> Tally girl, we got us quite a New Year's Eve dinner here now, don't we, baby? Yes, we do. Here in our little mountain camp. Don't worry, baby. You're going to get you some. You know, y'all, you've been with me now for, it's six years I've been doing these videos. And it's been a whole lot of fun, and I, I really enjoy it, and I love every one of y'all. And this is a very kind of special New Year's Eve for me, because this is the third New Year's Eve in the last 30 years. I was here in the mountains for uh, 1999, New Year's Eve, Y2K, remember that? And I watched the sun go down over Ragged Mountain and ushered in the new year for the year 2000. And the year 2009, I came up here to dig, dig out my, my tent because it had gotten caved in in a blizzard snowstorm. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. And here I am now, 2019, as we begin a new decade, 2020. I didn't plan it that way. It just kind of turned out that way. But this is kind of a little... This special one to also to me because tomorrow, January 1st, I'm going to be 69 years old. And if the good Lord allows me one more trip around the sun here on this planet, next year this time, I'm going to be 70, so that's going to make me officially old. <laughs> but I really appreciate y'all being here. I love each and every one of you that subscribe to my channel and watch my videos and little tally girl does too. Right now, we're going to say the blessing. Come on up here, baby. Come on. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for another year. Another blessed year here on your green earth. Now I get your nose out of my plate now. I'm watching you. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Thank you for this time together in these mountains and this little tent camp with this little brown dog and my family, my friends, my YouTube subscribers, followers, ones that love watching these videos that I so much enjoy. And we just pray now, Lord, for our country, our just our families, our friends, those of us that need healing, need help, need, Lord, just your special blessing poured out upon us. And we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this amazing meal. In Jesus' name, strengthen our bodies, nourish us with our service. Amen. Tell you, dog, what are you barking at? Growling at? Eddie. I'm growling because I want my prime rib. Look, let me tell you something, little dog. When we're praying, you got to have a little bit of reverence, baby. Yeah, I got reverence. Now give me my bone. <laughs> ah, you're so incorrigible. Get out of my plate. Happy New Year, y'all. Where you at, little dog? Come on over here. You know you're always going to get yours. <laughs> You want this? Daddy, you mean do I want this? Give me that, Daddy. Tally. Hey, easy. You be polite. You want this? Easy. Easy. Okay.
Well, Tally Girl, here we are. The first day of the new year. New Year's Day 2020. <laughs> and it's a sun shining, but the wind's blowing. You come up here to wish Daddy happy birthday? Yeah, Daddy. Happy birthday, Daddy. <laughs> happy birthday. Just got off the phone with Mom. It's a true blessing to have your 92-year-old mother call you up first thing in the morning to sing happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, Daddy, that is a blessing. Be careful, don't spill my coffee. Mmm. <laughs> you little wiggle wart. We're gonna start the first day of the new year out here with the Lord this morning. My baby. Yeah, Daddy, sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, now be still. Callie, your breast stinks so bad from eating them dead mice under the wood pile. Now, Daddy, can I borrow your toothbrush? <laughs> oh. Let's see what Proverbs have to say. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That sounds like a pretty good word to start out the first day of the new year. Doesn't it, Tally Dog? <laughs> We got to get our black eyed peas on, don't we? Let's get our black eyed peas soaking here. If there's only two of us here in camp, Tally, I'm just going to do a half a pound. About three and a half cups of water there from that spring in the hillside down the road. Tally dog, you are after them mice, aren't you, baby? Yeah, I'm going to get them too. We're going to do the quick method today instead of the overnight soak. I'm going to boil them up, let them boil for about 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead with our ham hock. That be getting seasoned up in there some. Okay, I'm just going to saute up here a half of a green bell pepper, a half a yellow onion, about three nice minced up, nice size minced up garlic cloves. And I got some thyme and some sage and a little bit of rosemary round up in there and some olive oil. Just saute all that just enough to wake up those flavors a little bit. Add all our nice sauteed ingredients right into our pot. Next, it's going to go about a half a can of this Rotel Original. I did the whole pound of beans, I'd use the whole can. I'm going to add us about another cup or so of some hot water. I'm going to have plenty of liquid for these beans because they're going to, of course, soak a lot of that liquid up as they're cooking. Got a nice boil going on them again. We're going to set them right there on that wood stove. Add a little bit of salt, I forgot to do that. Do that salt and pepper, a little stir around in there. <laughs> They're looking good already. And we're just going to let them black eyed peas cook up nice and tender, simmer there on that wood stove for several hours because they're going to go some kind of good with those turkey legs we're going to smoke up for supper tonight, along with that homemade skillet cornbread. Hey dog, I swear I have never seen a dog so intense on catching a mouse in my life. You think he was a cat? <laughs> you had your nose stuck in that hole all afternoon. Yeah, daddy, but I think I seen him once. I know he's in there. He's gonna make one fatal slip.
Yeah, let's check out these turkey legs smoking on this little camp kettle smoker. They've been on there for about an hour and a half. We'll give them a little Pungo Prairie Piggy perfume on them there. Had them marinating in Italian, zesty Italian salad dressing and soy sauce and Worcester sauce and some poultry seasonings. They're going to be right on time. Check out our black eyed peas simmering in here on the wood stove. A nice big ham hock. Oh my goodness, y'all. I wish you could smell this. New Year's Day black eyed peas. Southern tradition. There we go. Sunset down over the mountain to the west. And the first day of the new year, 2020, is winding down, drawn to a close. What a great place to spend it. I've had this skillet in here in this oven warming up for about a half hour. And we're really supposed to bake this cornbread in a 400 degree oven. With this little camp oven, I'm lucky if I can get it to 350. And give this a nice dose of some cooking spray. And in goes our batter into that hot skillet. Give it a little want to even it out. Right on in the hot shell. All right, y'all. I think this cornbread is ready to come out of here. Huh. I don't burn myself with the handle of this skillet. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Is that pretty or what? Set it right in here by the wood stove. We're going to get those turkey legs. Oh, my goodness. Look at that right there now. Are they not beautiful? Huh. I don't know who's going to eat all this. Me and Tally Girl, I reckon. Got our cornbread. Good old black eyed peas. Little bits of that ham hock I pulled off of the bone. Nice big turkey leg. Slice of this cornbread. I need a pie server. See if I can get it out of there. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, sir, I think that's going to work just fine. Oh. <laughs> Bless you. Well, here we are. New Year's Day in the mountains with all my favorites. Black eyed peas, skillet cornbread, smoked turkey legs. Hey, and a little brown dog. <laughs> yes, we are. Happy New Year, baby. Happy New Year. Hey, dog. Huh. That boot owl. Hey. Huh. Oh, you and daddy, didn't he? We thought it was somebody calling, coming in camp. <laughs> Here I am answering. Who's there? Oh, who the hell's going? Woo -hoo. That owl was right here on top of us, wasn't it, baby? That girl, you still digging those mice? <laughs> Come here, baby. We're gonna get with daddy by the fire, man. That girl, you've been chasing them mice all day, baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Crack me up. Another year's coming gone, baby girl. We're starting a brand new one here today. We've had a great season up here in the mountains though. Family little dog. Me and daddy. This was 
hair. This one hair. <laughs> All right, we're chasing mice. Oh my goodness! Little brown dog thinks she's a cat. 